Joining me now to break down today's developments is criminal defense attorney David Shapiro. Thank you for coming in this afternoon. Huge day. Anything about it surprise you? Absolutely, absolutely. We heard so much about George Gascon coming with this big announcement and whether the announcement was going to be he was going to recommend nothing and just let the system play out with this upcoming habeas petition or we heard so much about possibly a recommendation for voluntary manslaughter in which case if the judge went along with that the Menendez brothers would be released. What Gascon wound up doing today was basically saying, hey, we're just not recommending that this be a special circumstances murder, which makes the brothers parole eligible, but on a murder charge, which they stood by pretty strongly in the press conference we saw today. As we are pointing out, uh, this has to go to the judge. The judge actually makes the decision. Tell us the process, what he will take into account, and how long that may take, this whole process. Sure. Well, tomorrow, as we heard from the press conference today, the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office will file the appropriate paperwork. From there, a hearing will be set usually within about 30 days, so about a month or so there will be that hearing. And if the judge agrees and signs off on the district attorney's recommendation, what that then triggers is that the Menendez brothers would be parole eligible under California's youthful offender parole. Basically, they committed offenses when they were 18 and 21 at such a young age. They've served a significant amount of time in prison. They would then be parole eligible, which means they would still have to go before the parole board whenever that happens, then they're still several months away and there's a whole process. So this is not a 2024 type resolution. This is probably going to go deep into next year. Does the judge look at whether the abuse actually happened, whether they're a danger to society? Does he compare it to other cases? What do we really think he's going to be doing when he gets this? Well, the law says that there's a presumption that, that they should go along with it, meaning the court should go along with this recommendation from the district attorney, unless there's really a major dangerousness situation here. And what we've seen over the course of the last 35 years or so is really exemplary behavior by both brothers within the CDCR, within the state prison system. So they won't get very far with that argument, any victims' rights advocates or anyone advocating that the, that the gentleman should stay in prison. So the judge is going to look at everything. Most certainly, almost all of those factors should favor the Menendez brothers ultimately getting released if he signs off on that parole. Clearly a good day for the defense team, but they are saying now that the 96 convi conviction should be totally reversed because they say it was uh, the abuse allegations were improperly kept from the jury. Is that a bridge too far to take it to that point? No, not at all, because remember, they have exhausted all their regular appeals, and what this habeas petition is alleging is particularly two main things. The first being this letter that Eric allegedly wrote to a family member before the murders, talking about this abuse at the hands of his father, how he couldn't take it anymore. And that was not brought up in the second trial, certainly not even in the first trial. And we also have this, this musician coming up and saying, hey, that I was actually molested by the father in the house as well, which in very ways corroborates corroborates what the Menendez brothers have said. So the argument there is that if the jury had heard that evidence, it is likely a different verdict could have been reached. Not that they would have been found factually innocent or innocent of everything, but that a voluntary manslaughter conviction would have been appropriate, which is what they asked for back you know, in the 1990s. The idea of the abuse, uh, the letter, the new evidence, much more to talk about. Thank you. You've agreed to stay on at 6 p.m. David Shapiro will continue this conversation. So much more to dive into with this decision today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. See you at 6.